Now, some of y'all like to shave like this, okay? You shaving your love below like this. Well, look, you might as well be. Some of y'all act afraid to look at your precious lamb. And I've seen some people afraid to look under their own armpits. They going to war with them. I know we have to tease through our mental space when it comes to touching our own bodies, which is interesting because some of us will allow other people to touch our bodies before we touch them ourselves. Hmm. But you can use this to look down there. <laughs> What's up y'all, it's your girl Dr. Nina and I'm hitting y'all back with another TMI skincare video. I get so many messages from y'all asking me to talk more about shaving. Now I feel like with shaving I learn something new about my body every time I do it and something that works better for me. We know there are a gang of ways to get rid of hair and if you stay up late and watch infomercials like I do, then you know that there is a million bajillion ways to remove hair. Hair removal creams, waxing, laser hair removal, electrolysis, epilator, and lots of other stuff that's out there. There are a bunch of extra bad decisions waiting to be made when it comes to hair removal. But be careful because some of those decisions can make you feel like you done lost your whole life for a day and all the way through next week. As if shaving wasn't enough, we also got to worry about ingrown hair, scars, wounds. And if you're like me and you have hydratinitis superativa, which can cause boils in the sensitive, more sweaty prone areas of the body, then shaving can almost definitely not be fun for you. I think in all the years of shaving, this body that can be hair prone like no other, I've really found some ways to soothe my skin, get rid of the ingrown hairs, and also not end up with things like chicken skin, all of these other things that can occur due to some of our shaving practices. And many of you all that have watched me for years know that shaving is my thing because I like to be in control of the things that are on my body. On top of that, my body doesn't do really well with waxing. Shaving can also be cost efficient and effective, and if you do it when you actually have the time, it can be pretty pretty safe on you. So today is definitely gonna hit y'all with those safety tips and those things that I have used over the years to shave these sensitive areas that can give you the low down blues if you don't shave correctly or if you're shaving with bad blades or even worse, stuff with bacteria on it. Ooh. I'm gonna make sure I also share with you some things that have really worked for me in terms of home remedies to make sure that I stay away from those ingrown hairs, rough and scratchy skin after shaving, all the itch munging, itch mungas, and everything else that can really be scary when it comes to shaving. Now y'all know what your girl gonna tell you. If you having big issues after shaving and you're causing rashes, bumps, or blisters to stick around more than a week, you need to be going to the doctor. Click like if these are the types of videos that you would like to see in the future and also let us know some of the shaving remedies and things that you found that have really worked for you over the years. Everything I discussed today can be found down below in that good old information section. And y'all don't forget to thumbs up this video if you like it, comment, share, and subscribe, and also click on those notification bells so you can know when I upload on Thursdays and Sundays. Make sure you also check out my Now That's Life podcast, which is now live, and you can check it out on all your major podcasting platforms. Links to my podcast can be found down below in the information section. The first thing is to get yourself a bomb razor. Choosing a firm and sturdy razor with a soothing strip line is the best way to go. Make sure that you're using a new sharp razor or even a bikini razor. Never, ever, 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 ever use a dirty, rusty razor unless you want your whole soul to be set on fire. And I know some of us love the disposable razors and some of those work best for us, especially for those of us that are using them a few times and throwing them away. But for those of you all getting these disposables and using them for months and months on end, you are asking for big problems. Now I'm gonna have to get back to my roots. I'm not telling you to spend all your cash. In fact, in the past few weeks, I did a video where I went to Dollar Tree and picked up some body care items specifically related to shaving as well and I was quite pleased and surprised at the results I got. After a few weeks, I haven't seen any problems in trying out some of their products and I'm still clean and clear and under control. So if you have the money, it's okay to set aside for that. But if you don't, there are ways to find some better products for you that are not gonna break the bank. So it's not just all about money, it's also about quality and time that you put in. I told y'all in the past that I only use my detachable razor heads for up to two weeks. If you really want to get technical with it, I usually only use those bad boys for five or six shaves. And I shave about two to three times a week. 
You only get one body. Y'all gonna quit playing with me about, oh, I ain't finna spend no money on no razor like that. You need to set aside the money that you use it on things you know you ain't got no business to take care of your one body. Make sure you're being extra careful with those utensils. The next thing is if you're planning to do a deep shave, make sure that you prep your body completely before. And I'm talking about areas like your love below, in between the legs and the upper thigh area, and also under the arms. And the booty too, because some of us have that infamous hairy booty hole. We talking to you in my skincare here, so don't clutch your pearls yet. Before shaving, take about five to 10 minutes to sit and soak or stand up in a warm shower. I said warm shower, your body should not be boiling. I promise some of y'all trying to boil yourself like lobsters and crabs. Yeah, I'm talking to you. This helps to soften your outer layer of skin. This makes it so much easier to remove the hair. This is gonna lessen the amount of times you feel obligated to run over your legs with a razor. It also lessens the chances of razor burn. After this, I like to lightly exfoliate. Now you hear me say, I like to. You have to figure out what works best for your skin because there's a lot of controversy behind shaving actually being exfoliation. But for me, I find doing a light exfoliation before I shave works best for me. But you have to find what works best for you. Exfoliation can be as little as taking a washcloth and going over the area of the skin that you're going to shave. Or a minor scrub. Or you guys know I love my Spin for Perfect Skin by Vanity Planet. I can get the lightest exfoliation exfoliation possible without irritating my skin too much before a good shave. This can definitely help to tease out any ingrown hairs, previous ingrown hairs, or any possible like a pre-treatment so that you avoid that and so your skin is ready and fully prepared for a good shave. Also make sure that you trim as much hair as possible before you begin the shaving process. I've told you guys this before. Some of us wait long times in between shaves so the hair has the chance to grow a lot longer than it normally would. I love these scissors right here. They bay, they are everything. As you can see, the ends are blunted but the insides of these bad boys are precise. These give you a little extra and added control and they help you to guide yourself while cutting the area in a smooth fashion. I would assume it's much harder to cut through a swamp than a nicely trimmed front lawn. These scissors make it easy for me to keep the cutting safe. And what I do is I take my time on days that I've waited too long to shave and I need to clip down a little bit. I take time and cut upward slowly so that I can catch the hairs at their longest and go back and continue to go upward. It keeps me from making mistakes. Now some of y'all like to shave like this, okay? You shaving your love below like this. Well, look, you might as well be. Some of y'all act afraid to look at your precious lamb. And I've seen some people afraid to look under their own armpits. They going to war with them. I know we have to tease through our mental space when it comes to touching our own bodies, which is interesting because some of us will allow other people to touch our bodies before we touch them ourselves. Hmm. So the way that you don't shave blindly, I love these little mirrors and I have links to these down below. These little mirrors are great for everything from makeup to looking at the back of your head to carrying in your purse because they don't break. But you can use this to look down there. <laughs> Or even if you just wanted to look under your arm before you shave to kind of see what's going on under there. Because some of us shave without actually needing to shave or actually looking at our hair follicles. Also, we're shaving when we don't have enough time, we rushing, and that causes problems within itself. But this mirror will make you slow down because you're gonna look and see what the product is and what you actually have going on. So just take the mirror, look down there, and you can even use one hand for shaving, one hand with the mirror, and this is gonna be a good combination combination because it's gonna help you guide yourself and you're not gonna over shave. And even if you're just using it to check before you shave and you might not use it as you're shaving, it still gives you a guide as to what needs to be shaved and what can be left alone. Now you might wanna cut some corners, but one place you don't wanna cut them is with your shaving cream. Y'all know I love to talk about my favorite shaving creams, but back in the day, I used to just use conditioner and I had a thing for suave coconut conditioner. It, like no other, just really, really worked well on my legs. In fact, I would get in the shower, I would allow it to sit on my skin for a while. It would seem like it would make the hair as well as the skin soften. So when I went over it with the razor, it was pretty safe and easy to shave. In fact, the skin on our body and the hair that we shave act a lot like our scalp and our hair. If you don't have enough slip and moisturization when it comes time to shave, 
then you're more likely to cut and cause abrasions to the skin, leaving your skin angry and irritated. Things like aloe vera gel, coconut oil, shea butter, and olive oil are all gonna create great buffers for your skin and for your razor. When you go to the store, there seems to be a mall of shaving creams, like so many to choose from. But I've been rocking with Pure Silk for a long time now. I integrate a few others here and there, but this one tends to be the most economical and the thickest and the richest for my skin, leaving it softer. I also recently found it at the Dollar Tree, so check that video out too, and check out your options at your discount stores as well. I know you guys have seen a million shaving videos from me, but wherever you're shaving, provide a thin layer of that shaving cream over that area. The reason being is because you want to see where you've shaved. If you create a small light buffer, you're gonna be able to see the area in which you've shaved. If you put too much on, you might forget where you've shaved. Because as we know, running that razor back and forth over the skin, every time you're running a risk that you're causing some major damage. But not only that, some rough and dry skin patches. You wanna hold the skin tight with one hand while gliding the razor with the other. This is gonna make sure that the skin is pulled tight so that you're not causing irritation over areas that might be a little bit looser. You're gonna hold the skin tight with one hand or shave with the other hand. Another remedy for this is just holding that area of the skin really tight. Like when I shave under my arms, I hold my arm all the way up. This makes sure that the skin stays tight. But when you're shaving things like your legs, your bikini area, or your bajajay, you wanna kinda of hold it in a way that allows you to easily run the razor with out causing irritation. Because wherever your skin wrinkles up, you're running the chance that the razor is gonna go through and nick and cut that area because the skin is not laid smooth. This is also gonna help you avoid too much pressure on the area. Pay close attention to your shaving direction. Make sure you're shaving in general the same direction in which your hair grows. Now this is controversial because so many people out there say that everybody's hair grows one way and that's absolutely not true. You need to sit and look at the way that your hair grows. For me, I shave up my legs and calves. The reason being most of my hair grows upward. Some people's grow downward and that's the way they choose to shave. I'm saying take a look at your body. See the way that your hair grows because you're unique. Just make sure you're shaving in that general direction that your hair grows the most. You wanna make sure that you're using slow and steady strokes as well. For example, if you're shaving the bikini line or even between the legs, I know this is where my hair direction kinda of changes. You wanna make sure that you apply just a light amount of pressure going downward with your razor or again, in the direction in which your hair grows. You only need to make one pass in this area because that skin is a little bit thinner and you don't wanna cause unneeded irritation. One pass should be fine, especially if you're using a razor that has a lot of blades. Now let's revisit something. You notice that I shaved up and then I shaved down. I shave up for most of my leg, but inside towards the pubic area, I shave down with light pressure. It just keeps me more aware and that's more of the direction my hair grows there. It's just really interesting. So make sure you're paying attention to that direction. Make sure that you rinse your skin off completely with warm water. Make sure that you pat and not drag dry. Pat, not drag. When shaving the bikini area, you wanna make sure that you calm the skin down afterwards. You wanna make sure that that razor has been rinsed off completely. And also, if you get out of the shower and you feel a little irritation, put a cold compress on quick. Use something like a clean washcloth and add some cold water to it and hold it over the area that's a little more sensitive and maybe a little irritated. I do this even when it's not irritated just to reduce the chances that there will be ingrown hairs or other issues. I then add something that soothes the skin, something like a little tea tree oil along with a little aloe vera gel. Y'all know that I always swear by this for any kind of irritation because the tea tree oil is an anti-inflammatory and an antiseptic. The next thing is to make sure you're getting moisture, moisture, and more moisture. It's important to hydrate and moisturize after shaving. You want to make sure that you apply an unscented alcohol-free moisturizer. This is going to lock in moisture and prevent any over drying and over drying as we know can cause further irritation. Look for products that contain things like aloe vera, jojoba oil, and vitamin E for hydration. After shaving, your shaving ain't really done because you need to make sure that you're taking good care of the razor that you use. After every shave, make sure that you're drying out your razor. What I like to keep handy is a little bit of rubbing alcohol and I can run like a little bit of rubbing alcohol across the blades and make sure that I hang the razor in a clean and dry area so that it's easy to drain without building up bacteria for moisture. You wanna make sure that you're replacing old blades or old blade heads. I replace them about every two weeks or every five to seven shaves. And a lot of us need to make sure that we're not storing our razors permanently in our showers because it picks up more moisture and therefore more bacteria while it's sitting in the shower. 
Now I'm gonna go through some frequently asked questions that I get about shaving. One of the questions is what if I do get irritated after shaving? If you do get some irritation, make sure that you're taking extra care daily to take a few minutes to either soak in a tub or stand in the shower. And if you have a detachable spray head, spray on low pressure some warm water down there to soothe the area. I also avoid rubbing my skin dry and pat it dry because that rubbing causes a lot of friction, which can cause added irritation. Make sure that you're applying a fragrance free lotion and stop shaving and allow your skin to rejuvenate. Now here's some quick remedies that I use. And if you find that you have itchiness, bumps, irritation down, especially down in your love below, you probably need to go to the doctor after a week of not seeing any results at all. Like if the irritation ain't going away, it might be something else that you need to catch quickly. Tea tree oil is really great. And I usually dilute it with just a little bit of olive oil. The healing properties are amazing for soothing your skin, but also helping to solve those ingrown hairs. The aloe vera is just bomb. Whenever I'm having irritation and I put a little aloe vera on there, it acts as an antibacterial and an anti-inflammatory. Another trick I learned about long ago is using aspirin. If you take a piece of aspirin, kind of crush it up with the back of a spoon, and then put a little water over it to make a paste and put it over the area that's irritated, it usually helps to clear up that area just a little bit or soothe it and give you a little bit of healing properties. I just apply that paste to the affected area, let it dry for a little while, and and then rinse it off completely with a little bit of warm water. I also know that I love me some sugar scrub. And because sharp hairs just beneath the skin are what actually causes razor bumps, a nice sugar scrub can help to clear those skin cells and allow that hair to grow free. I take a little bit of sugar, olive oil, and a few drops of tea tree oil. I mix that together, rub it over the sensitive area just for a little while in a circular motion, rinse it off completely with lukewarm water. And then I apply like a little bit of coconut or olive oil directly to that area and it helps to soothe that irritated skin. I get questions about blisters and pimples that you guys know have come from shaving. One thing that I've done in the past is switch up my showers for a nice warm bath and I sit in that bath for a while and it helps to heal those just a little bit more. But if you're finding that it's becoming bigger and more irritated, again, go see a doctor. Now, if you get folliculitis or something that is causing a infection to your hair root, then this is why I keep a little bit of an antibacterial ointment around at home. So I like to make sure that again I'm soaking in a warm bath but when I get out I'm putting a little bit of that antibacterial ointment over it and it helps my skin a lot. Now if you get into severe rash, fever, bumps, and pimples everywhere just stop shaving. Drop the razor and go straight to the doctor. So I hope this video has been very helpful and beneficial for you guys. I know shaving can be a pain in the butt but all of us are gonna make it through with this TMI skincare. So if you like this video make sure that you comment, share this video with someone who can use it, and subscribe. Also take just a few moments to let me know down below what you would like to see more of. Thanks so much for watching guys. Beautiful brown baby doll. Peace. Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up.